Severe thunderstorms this afternoon with high winds. I may be able to do this trail in a day hike. It's always good to challenge yourself. So I need to find a way across. Good morning, everybody. This is Dan with Backpacking Adventures, and I'm finally back out on the trail again. Today, I am going to do the old loggers path. Now, I know I did that last year. Um, I did that clockwise this year. I'm gonna do it counterclockwise. This trail is roughly a 28, 27 and a half, 28 mile loop. This is located in the Loyal Stock State Forest in North Central slash Eastern Pennsylvania. It is called the old loggers path because it's basically, as it says, was made by tying a whole bunch of old logger path, little roads and trails together. This trail crosses several roads. There are just a few little road walks. The terrain for this trail is pretty much a roller coaster. It's up and down. I am doing this counterclockwise today, which has a pretty steep and long incline this morning, and then it will level off for much of the day with one final incline until I think I'll get to a spot probably about, I'd like to go between 12 and 15 miles today. We're just gonna have to see how the weather holds up. So let's get it done. So far the trail is pretty muddy. There were some severe thunderstorms that came through Pennsylvania and up here yesterday. And so I pretty much expected the trail to be pretty uh, muddy and wet. As you can tell the trail is made up by these little roads. This is clearly one of the old loggers path and you'll see this quite a bit throughout the trail well let's talk about my gear i pretty much downsized to my mostly warm weather gear and for this trip i mean i'm telling you it feels really nice finally especially since the winter but this trip my base weight is only 9.6 pounds i could lighten that up a little bit more i have a full base layer packed away i could at least leave left the pants because I have rain pants that would, you know, act as a layer of warmth. It is like the 4th of June, so that it can, you know, get cold. So I'm very happy with the gear I have today and fully loaded. I'm only at 16 and a half pounds. So I'm pretty, I feel pretty good about that. Now this trail is blazed orange. However, on other trails, they traditionally use two blazes to, to indicate a turn. On this trail, for some reason, they use arrows. I mean, the arrows are great, yes, but so far, this is the only trail that I've seen them use arrows. I'm sure there's plenty more that do that, but just remember for this trail, arrows to dictate the turn. Second breakfast. Well, I think I'm coming up on the waterfalls, which I think are part of Doe Run. So there's just a few steps off the trail to get to them. It's not bad, it's not far at all. It's worth going to check them out.
right, I'm about seven miles in. It's around 11 o'clock. I still got a long way to go, so I'm gonna try to sit here a little bit since I didn't really rest yet and uh, fill up on some water. And then we'll just go from there. Kind of tired. I woke up at around three o'clock this morning to be on the road by 5:30, 6 o'clock. So I'm pretty tired. A little anxious, you know. The night before, always a little anxious. Didn't really sleep well. So in the weather for this trip, it was it's sunny right now, but um, as of yesterday, they were calling for just some rain in the afternoon. This morning, I woke up. They were calling for 80% chance of rain, maybe thunderstorms. So by the time I got here, there was a warning sent um, from my weather app that they're calling for severe thunderstorms this afternoon with high winds. So hopefully I get to camp before that happens. Um, I don't mind walking in the rain, but I'd rather just be set up and in my tent before big thunderstorms come. It's always better that way. So I'm just gonna sit here, enjoy the waterfalls and rehydrate. I'm about eight and a half, nine miles in. I'm starting to really get hungry. So hopefully somewhere coming up soon is gonna be a nice place for me to sit down and, and have a lunch because I am starving. So it looks like I came up on Doe Run Shelter it's the it's one of two uh, shelters. Can't remember the the second one. We'll figure that out uh, tomorrow. But if you can see over here, that's the shelter. So I think we'll stop there for lunch. So this is Don't Run Shelter. It's pretty. It's relatively new. Plenty of room for a lot of people. Some wood. Uh, an old cook pot. Some other things in here. Time to get some lunch. Today on the menu, it's just these little thin sandwich, bread, spam, and mustard. It's pretty good. I'm gonna eat a little bit of snacks along with it, but so far, so good. I was a little after 12 and I'm at mile 11, so I'm making good time, but clouds are starting to roll in. So I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna have of dry weather. So I'm gonna hang out here for Probably a good hour and have lunch. I just wish it wasn't so early, so I I would just stay here, but it's uh, and ride the storms out. But it's just too early. I can't sit here for you know from 12 on to you know bedtime nine or 10 o'clock at night. What would I do? So I am going to eat, rest, and uh, see where I want to end up today. It's about a quarter after one. And for those of you young whippersnappers that don't understand analog time, that's 1.15. <laughs> Tells you how old I am. Here's the deal. I can tell the storms are rolling in. The last time I checked the weather this morning, where I had signal, it looked like the rain was going to start hitting at around, or at least above like 35%, around 3 o'clock with higher, much higher percentage around uh, between four and six. And then of course storms the rest of the night as, as well. So I am at mile 11 for the day. I just hit Doe Run Shelter. There is another shelter. I think it's Spark Top Shelter or something like that in eight miles from here. So since it's only a little after one, I average two miles an hour, which it's possible I can do that, but I am just gonna start to get tired for sure. Just have to stop and take breaks. I will make it there somewhere between five and seven. I'm guessing closer to five, probably maybe 5.30ish. So even if I get rained on, it's fine because I'll be going to a shelter, it'll be a nice dry spot. Just go in there, dry off and hang out. So that is the plan. And if for some reason I don't make it there, if I get tired or whatever, there are about three more campsites between here or there. So I figured I'll 
give myself a little bit of a challenge. That'll be about a 20 mile day. So let's see where we get. Came out to, I think, I believe it's a gas line. Yeah, right here. Even a nice little hat. You have a little bit of view. And I can see the clouds. I don't see anything real dark, at least. In these couple directions, so. I'm just gonna keep on going. There's, I am at about mile 14 for the day. There's 13 miles left for the trail. So hopefully I make it to uh, the next shelter before the storms hit. Here's a really nice campsite. If you're going counterclockwise, it's at mile roughly 12, between 12 and 13. And if you're going counterclockwise like me, it's roughly around uh, mile 15, it's between 14 and 15. It's a really nice campsite. Look at this structure. There is this big rock and it looks like a tree turned over. So this tree at one time was living on top of this rock. I don't know how that's possible. It's pretty neat. So I'm about mile 17, 16, something like that. It's about 10 miles to go for the trip. So I think I am going to sit here and have a snack and just relax a little bit because I am pushing some high miles. So I need to stop and, and rest more often. Roughly here at 12 and a half, not 11. 11 miles is right in here, That's where I thought it was, but I'm still pretty good. I'm right here about 12 and a half miles. And the whole way through, I'm wondering, I didn't see any vistas. Well, over here was Sullivan Mountain, and it has a spectacular view, and I must have just went right past it. It was probably overgrown, it was probably in that overgrown area, and it's kind of like a little side trail, so I missed one of the best views of the trip. So about 12 and a half miles left of the trip, and I'm gonna finish my pot part. Take a look at this. This thing looks like it just fell. I'm wondering if it happened yesterday in all the storms. I hope it's not as strong today as yesterday. I'm in trouble. You know, as I'm going through here, I've been thinking. I do this from time to time when I'm hiking. Feeling pretty good. I got about 11 miles um, to the end of this trail from about mile 11 if you're coming clockwise. I'll be making it to Del, the Doe Run Shelter in a couple hours, but then it's only roughly five or six miles then to the end of the trail. I'm thinking, and I'm just thinking right now, I may be able to do this trail in a day hike. So that would be 27 and a half, 28 miles in a day. It's not too bad. If I stay out of the mud, like I'm walking through right now, I should be able to make good time. I mean, I'm feeling really good. So this can kind of be training because next week I'm doing the West Rim Trail on Monday, today's Thursday. So I'll be starting the West Rim Trail and I want to do that in overnight. That's about 32 miles, something like that. Terrain is very similar to roller coaster, just like this, up and down, up and down. So I did that trail last year and the first day I did 24 miles. I don't know if I'll be able to do that again. So today would kind of be that test. And that way I don't have to stay in the damaging thunderstorms 
I just have to hike through them. <laughs> so I'll probably end up hiking at night. It's very possible. If it gets really cloudy, it'll get really dark here in the woods. If I choose to do that, I'll get to the shelter and make my decision. I think I can do it. It's always good to challenge yourself from time to time. That's how you'll be able to increase doing some miles, as you push yourself. That's what it's all about. And to me, that's fun. Might not be fun to most people, but I like to have challenges. And you know, if I just go and do what I know I can do, just kind of, I know where I'm going and I know how long it's gonna take me to get there. And it's, it's no real excitement. I mean, there is, but it's just, when you're challenging yourself, like, can I make it? And don't worry, I'm being safe. I have plenty of food for, to stay out. And that was my plan. I have my tent and everything. I could always stop and just, you know, whatever. Just camp, but I, I think I can do it. We'll see. Enough talking. I forgot about this. I gotta cross this. I gotta figure out where. Now, last year when I did this with Lance, it was not this steep. This must have got all washed out somehow. So I have to figure out how to get down there and get across. You see the orange blaze way off in the distance. So I need to find a way across. This is where I'm gonna cross. I'm gonna have to cross over in there. It's gonna be deep, but it's not the deepest of than down there. That's really deep down there and fast, so gotta get across. I was I made it across. I was gonna film me crossing, but that water was very fast. First of all, it was very cold, but it was fast moving. There was a lot of pressure. So for me to film me crossing, I'd have to come across, set up the camera, go back and then come back again. And nope, not doing that. Not on this one. There's some really nice campsite along this trail. There's no shortage of, of campsites. And this one even looks like somebody made a nice recliner with arms and everything. Very nice. Well, I'm at about mile 20 for the day, or between 19 and 20, and about uh, mile eight if you're coming clockwise, and came out on the road where me and Lance got lost last year. We, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we came out here and not seeing this place, we kept on going up that way, about maybe, 40, 50 yards, and we just saw a red blaze and decided to take it. And so that ended us going around this fenced in area for about three miles or three hours extra on the trip. And it took us up over a mountain and to only spit us out right back here. So, so just remember, if you see red blazes, do not follow them. Sharp Point Vista, and there is a nice picnic table, so I am going to sit here for a little bit, rehydrate, maybe get a snack, look at the view, and I'm telling you, spectacular. Well, it's probably closer to six o'clock. As you can see, I have my rain jacket on. It just started raining. It's only raining light, but I do hear thunder rolling off way in the distance so we'll see if it uh if it hits so this should be a fun rest of the hike and you know sometimes rain jackets can kind of be useless i was already soaking wet with sweat my arms are, are wet inside here now but when that cold rain hits you and the, the temperatures drop a little bit but that's cold rain constantly hitting your body and little cool breeze and your body temperature can start to, to drop. So this really isn't to keep me dry because I'm already soaking wet with sweat, it's dripping off my hat. This is more just to keep me warm. So I'm not 
not sure if you can see, but if you look at my spot device, it's blinking red. That means it doesn't have a signal to the satellite. And it has been blinking red for probably, I would say 10 miles. Maybe from between eight to 10 miles. So just remember, if you're coming out here with at least a, tra a spot transponder, if you're going clockwise the first 10 miles, the transponder's not gonna work. If I don't have signal, and I need to call SOS, it is, it's not gonna go through. And uh, that kind of worries me. This happened on the West Rim Trail where it didn't have signal. Well, I'm assuming it didn't have signal because I didn't see it blinking red. I had a video about it. That's not good. So I, again, I've been looking. This subscription is up in August, so I will continue to look. Maybe the end reach, I don't know. We'll see. All right, well, I left the uh, Sprout Run Shelter. I only have four more miles to the car. I can do that in about two hours, provided it's not all uphill and it's not as far as I know. So I'll make it to the car. It's about 20 after seven now. So it'll probably get dark, but who cares? I got my light. It'll be a nice change. Oh, my glorious car. I made it. All right, so I made it. About 20, almost 28 miles total, 27 and a half or something like that. So I'm pretty proud of that, that's pretty good. But I can tell you what, I am very, very tired and very sore. So I need to go find something neat, but I doubt anything's open because of COVID, everything closes early. But thanks for coming along and I appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Oh,